Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the importance and the difference between negotiables and non-negotiables when it comes to codependence recovery. Now, the first thing we have to recognize is to, to know our negotiables and non-negotiables, we must know what our morals and values are. Now, I recently did a video on that and I encourage you, I'll leave you a link here to go watch it. It's called Codependence Recovery, Understanding Morals and Values. See, if we don't have a North Star, if we don't know what we value, and, and remember a moral is something we see as good and bad. A value is about our belief system and what we're gonna pursue over something else. So if we don't know what we value at a high level and what we see as good or bad, then how do we know if some, if you know something is negotiable in our life or non-negotiable? So it's critical that we go through that video and those exercises that I give you to navigate that so we can determine our negotiables and non-negotiables, all right? So let's get to what a negotiable is. Well, it's pretty simple. It's something we're willing to compromise on that while we may have a strong opinion, we can be moved, you know? We won't, there's that old saying, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, all right? If it's negotiable, we're like, yeah, okay, the, you know, the bathwater is dirty, but I'm not gonna get rid of the baby. Like, I can survive a little bit of dirty bathwater because I love this baby so much, all right? That's the idea behind a negotiable, all right? The other thing is, it, it just may not be perfect, but it doesn't go against our morals and values. Remember, we don't ultimately see it as breaking our a value as our belief system that we act on and our morals are what we see as good and bad. And so it might be in that more gray area, but it doesn't rise to where it's like, no, I can't do this, okay? So what are some examples of a negotiable? Well, let's say in a relationship, maybe you're not as concerned with how clean, how, how clean they keep the house. Like it's negotiable. Like, yeah, maybe I like it picked up, but I don't need it spotless. Or maybe how often somebody drinks, maybe it just doesn't matter to you. Um, it, it's negotiable that they can come home and have a drink every night after work um, or once a week or once a month. Like there's an amount in there that you find negotiable that you're willing to live with or foods they like. Or maybe table manners. You're like, I could care less if there's food, food flying everywhere, elbows on the table, shoveling it. Like it just, I don't even see it. I don't even notice it. I don't know. That's negotiable to you. All right. Maybe it's activities. Some people, it's just, they have to pick somebody that they share the same activities. Like that's very important for them to be in a relationship. Others, it's complete opposite. They don't want to share anything. They want to have this intimate time together, but they want a lot of separation to be able to do their own. Where do you fall on that? What's your moral and value? And is this negotiable or non-negotiable? Same thing with careers. Maybe for you personally, you're like, there's certain careers I would never, ever do. But other ones, it's like, well, you know, there's some problems with this career, but on balance, it's negotiable. It meets most of my values. And I don't see it as morally bad if I do this, okay? So that's how we navigate what's negotiable, all right? So what about non-negotiables? How do we determine that? Well, that's something that just flat out goes against our values. Remember, our values are our belief system that this, this is how I believe the world should be in, in all these different areas of my life, and I will not sacrifice it. And because I won't sacrifice it, I see any attempt to get me to change this is bad. That's my moral. Remember, morals are about good versus bad. And so any request or any occupation or any food or table manners or drinking or whatever, if it's non-negotiable, like an example for me is I'm a recovering alcoholic, but if someone wanted to have a drink once a week, maybe get drunk a couple times a year, that's negotiable to me. Anything beyond that, non-negotiable. If they have to have a drink to be around me, non-negotiable as a friend or someone to date. Wouldn't go near it. Couldn't have it in my life. Now, here is something that has no negotiation in my life. Any type of drug. I know the whole world is smoking pot now, eating edibles. Everyone, their values are, it's great for you. My value is, I know the science, it's terrible for you. I, therefore, my moral is it's bad. 
I also know that anyone that's on that stuff, they're not present. You can't have a relationship with them because they're not in reality. They're stoned. They might as well be taking drugs or be drunk. They're not present. Well, I want a relationship with somebody who's present. That is non-negotiable. Now, isn't it funny? I mean, a lot of people would say, well, what's the difference between pot and alcohol? They're both mind altering substances, but it's just a, something about, well, I, I saw a lot of drug things growing up and I just, I my value on that is, that leads to really destructive behavior, both do, but I can't have that in my life. And so that's my, I have placed a higher value belief system on pot and, and it not being, or any type of drug being in my life, a higher value on that than alcohol, even though I grew up with an alcoholic mother and I'm a recovering alcoholic myself. It's funny how these things work out for us. Now, again, that doesn't make me right. It's just mine and you get to have yours. Yours may be the complete opposite and that's what I want you to look at or suggest you look at so you can honor it, okay? <clears throat> Number two, if we allow this behavior, we are actually angry at ourselves, not the other person. And that's what, this is the part that really messes people up in relationships. It's because they've never sat and looked at their morals and values and their negotiables and non-negotiables. They end up in relationships with people that are pot smokers. Like I have a client, she, her moral and value around pot is the same as mine. Yet she's married to somebody who smokes it a lot. No one taught her to sit down and navigate these questions. And so now she's with somebody who's doing something that's non-negotiable. Well, that's not his fault. And see, that's what, because of codependence, will blame the other person. I don't like this. You should love me and you should quit. Well, no, he smoked pot the first date. She told me the first date he got stoned. She knew he was a pot smoker. Now he's hit it most of their marriage, but she knows he smokes pot. He's not to blame here. These behaviors were there from the outset, but because we never sat down and laid this out, we thought they were hot, sexy, we're having fun. We get caught up in a very immature way of selecting people. And the next thing you know, we're married to somebody with five things that are non-negotiable. Well, that's not their fault. That's ours. Now people say, well, I didn't know. Well, most people have never sat down and had this discussion. What are your morals and values on this topic? What's negotiable and non-negotiable? They never investigated it. Also, most people, even though they deny it, they saw the signs early on and they just don't want to own their side of the street. That's the codependent piece. They're always looking to blame the other person. That's a big factor in codependence. If you watch my other videos, they won't take ownership that nobody gets in our life unless we allow it. We are responsible for that, all right? Number three, Codependents um, are almost always allowing people, places and things into their life that go against their morals and values, negotiables and non-negotiables. And that's what I was just speaking about. That they're not, they are responsible for that, yet they will project that blame onto others. And that's what they have, that's why this exercise is so important because they have to start taking ownership that, wait a minute, I've allowed all of these non-negotiables in my career, in my friendships, in my relationships, I need to do these exercises so I can begin changing that because that's how I can regain myself. If I skip these exercises, I can never heal from my codependence. That's why these are so important, okay? So what's the process to figure out your negotiables and non-negotiables? Make two lists. On one side, put negotiable. On the other side, put non-negotiable. And then you need to list virtually every aspect of life. What are your morals and values? And what morals and values are negotiable or non-negotiable for you? Like I just talked about pot. Where do you sit on different morals and values? What do you find negotiable? What do you find non-negotiable? What about pot? Politics should be on there. Religion, um, relationships. What, what's your moral and value and negotiable and non-negotiable about intimacy interv intervals? Is it once a day, once a week, once a month, once a year? How do you feel about that? Do you believe in monogamy? Do you believe in living with somebody? Is that your moral and value? Is that negotiable or non-negotiable that you need to live with someone before you get married? Are you the opposite? You don't even spend the night at somebody's house until you get married. 
Where do you sit on these things? These are the things we have to lay out. What about communication? Should there be a lot? Should it be you know, only through text message or only through phone call? I went for a long time. I refused to ever text. Refused it. I can't stand text message. I want to hear your voice. Plus, text message is horrific to have any type of conversation. And that's how most people have their, especially relationships. Only 7% of all communication is words. And yet people are having, they're running their business and having relationships and dating through text message. It just blows me away. And everyone wonders why they can't find somebody. They're using the least effective form of communication. And they wonder why they can't find somebody. Text message is the death of all of us in connection and intimacy. It's not possible. 93% of all communication is tone, body language. It's not even the words we use. And yet people are using innocuous, non-emotional words to make all their life decisions. Well, you can definitely see what's negotiable and non-negotiable for me and what my morals and values are around communication. What are yours? Okay. Parenting. This in a relationship, this has to be discussed. What about careers? What about friends, hobbies, every area of life? And you need to sit down and decide what's negotiable and non-negotiable. What are my morals and values? That's how you start healing this codependence. That's how you start making the type of money and having the career that you want. That's how you have the relationship that you want and deserve, the friendships, the joy, all the needs and wants that you deserve in your life. If you don't do these exercises, you're whistling blind. You know, that's not actually a great analogy, but mixed up two of them at the same time. You're whistling Dixie, right? You, you have no shot. You must do this to be able to uh, heal from codependence and achieve what you want in your life. Okay. So if you think that'll help somebody, please share it. Leave me your comments. Let me know maybe what some of your negotiables and non-negotiables are or how crazy mine are. I'm open to that. And finally, if you like this type of content, please subscribe. And as always, enjoy the journey.